Hey there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're taking a look here at the 2001 Subaru Legacy. This is the uh, BG5. And the submodel is the uh, GTB E-Tune 2. So as far as the third generation Legacy goes, this is the top of the line. This is an automatic transmission with Tiptonic switchable gears. So it's a 250 horsepower and automatic trim. Full symmetrical four wheel drive and an EJ20 twin turbo engine. Now I've owned one of these, this generation, not the E2, actually just the GT, not the GTB, and I adored it. These are one of the best cars that you can have, and this one's going to Canada, which is one of the best places to have one of these because you can drive it sporty style in the summer, or you can drive it winter style with four wheel drive. You still have the proper amount of power. It's good on the highway, it's comfortable. It's a Subaru, they're loved everywhere. All of this is stock, it's the stock intercooler. Turbo's on the side with a don't touch insignia. The coolant is good, the oil is good. 67,000 kilometers for this one. Here's the auction inspection sheet. I'll go over this in just a second. And overall condition of this one, Pretty good. A couple things here and there. It's nearly 20 years old. For a car that old, I'd say that the condition is quite good indeed. Okay, close that up. There we go. Have a quick look at what the car looks like. Uh, we had a bit of an issue. The driver who came in curbed the wheel on this curb right here. So they're going to pay for uh, new wheels to be put on. It's not badly curbed. Well, yeah, the wheels were already not in the worst condition, but that one's the worst of it. It's about 50% uh, 50, 50 of that wheel. Okay, auction inspection sheet I'll come to right after I switch off the engine here. Okay, 67028 kilometers at the time of shooting it. And give it a little rev here. Quiet car ish. No aftermarket exhaust. Just pulled out a green FD. You can probably see it down there. That thing is so loud. You can probably set off car alarms if they had them here in Japan. Okay, so a 2001 Legacy GTB E Tune 2. The E Tune 2 is just a post face model version of the E Tune. 2000 cc engine, Octary 4 with interior B, first time at auction. Interior dirty, seat cigarette burn hole, wheels scratched, windshield rock chip, front bumper scuffed and scratched, rear bumper scratched and dented, with a couple of mild dents on this side. Overall, I'd say that that diagram is pretty good. If you don't know what all these things mean, it's all on our website. You can check that out. Okay, so let's do the once around. Headlights. Very nice and bright. I'll come back to show any of the damages close up, but the front grille is peeling here. Front bumper is not that shiny and then has some scratches and stuff on it. But I shall come back to that. The check engine light was surprised on. Now sometimes check engine lights come and go and come and go. I'm not sure. Got somebody walking by, so I'm putting pointing it down to my shoes. Shoes time. Or I've been thinking about that a lot recently. There's one that sold for 25 grand today on Bring a Trailer. Okay, yeah, the check engine light. Um, maybe it was on at the time they inspected it uh, at the auction. Sometimes they do miss them. And then uh, maybe it just wasn't on. When you turn the engine on, it doesn't come on until several seconds later, leading me to believe it's something emissions related. But I don't know. Of course, we can send that to a mechanic here in Japan to diagnose, but I don't think it's going to be a big issue. I think it should be easy to fix cheaper in Canada than it is here in Japan. We live in kind of like, well, we live in Yokohama, which is a large city. It'd be similar to like uh, Vancouver in terms of size. And so, yeah, stuff is more expensive here because of the cost of land and such. So the E-Tune 2, well, the GTB first off, the B stands for Bilstein. Bilstein makes one heck of a good shock absorber. And so I think it's Eibach Springs with Bilstein's suspension. It's lower 
than the regular version, but only slightly. This is the stock height for this version of the car. And then if you do want to go lower, and you don't want to get some coilovers, you can get a lowering spring to put on the Bilsteins, and the Bilsteins can even be revalved, which is something you usually can't do with typical strut suspension. Which is cool. Okay, headlights, like I said, super clear. Usually these get foggy. I think these have been replaced. Because if the bumper gets a little bit dull, like this one has, typically the headlights will at the same rate. Okay, here's a close-up of that peeling section. And then the E-Tune gives you the Tiptronic um, shifting and a slightly different interior and body pieces. And, <laughs> I'm just double thinking in my mind, uh, the Tiptronic shifting actually might be on the non-E-Tune version too, I'm not 100% sure. That's uh, not glossy. i got a mosquito on me. Okay, some, uh, some rust on the arms here. These are normal. Usually these peel pretty bad. These ones are faded. You might be able to see it, you might not. When it comes to side panels, here's the dents that they're talking about. Have a look, one on each door right in basically the same spot in the center of each door. Okay, now the rest of the car is pretty good. Uh, the back section here, the dented part, is right here and right here. And then it's made out of like a, uh, a urethane material so that when you dent it, it pops back, but it flex cracks or kind of leaves it a little bit deformed. So see if you can see that. Also have some scuffs on this section here. This is what they considered the A3. Okay. And this side is, uh, is basically all good. Good, 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 good. Like, see, it looks really good in white. Cool spoiler up here. Oh, both the door mirrors are scratched a bit. Let me just quickly go ahead and show that. Now, both of them have roughly the same amount of that kind of scratch. Okay. These are the old school antennas that they used to have like 10 years ago. Uh, you used to be able to get broadcast TV using those. You can still get broadcast TV on cars now, but you don't need those antennas. They move to a fully digital instead of analog signal. But they've had those since like the early 90s. And it used to be very popular to watch TV in your car. Okay, nice clean trunk here. It has a couple of places to put your things. There and here. And then underneath there is the tire. There's no rust underneath uh, get out of here. I'm talking about the, the, the mosquito, not the viewers of this video. Okay, so this works. It clips into here. And then they have doggy ones here. And it clips in up there. And there's two of them. And then you can put the seats forward and use those same ones clipped up right behind the driver's side. So you can have a full doggy area. Or cat area, I guess or monkey area, or whatever other animals you want to put in your Subaru. The Subarus are kind of known as dog owner's vehicles. Or at least that's how they're trying to be uh, portrayed with stuff like that. Okay, so slightly different trim here for, uh, for this version, other than the standard version. You get a little bit more bolstering in the seats. The seats are uh, fairly firm, but they're comfortable. I like them quite a bit. The cigarette burn in the driver's seat that was uh, mentioned on the auction inspection sheet. It's right here. It is a burn your crotch style cigarette burn, uh, which is uh, unfortunate for those who like non-burnt crotches. And this part here has a little bit of fabric wear. You can see there. Okay, steering wheel is a Momo unit, but it's not really like a race car Momo unit. It's basically branding just for branding's sake. Uh, very good condition though, and the selected gears, I want a higher gear, I want a lower gear, and that's on both sides. Okay, now you can't see the gauges, they're all blacked out at the moment, but stick in, let me do that.
Ooh. And this thing came out. But it doesn't work. It doesn't actually display anything. Okay, fog lights and headlight levelizer. So if you're towing something, the back of the car will be sagged down and then you can use this to make your headlights point in the correct direction again. This is all basic stuff. You get a cup holder here. Kind of fun. And uh, the AC works. The Navi, I guess that doesn't work. Some sort of uh, aftermarket mount put on here. Automatic transmission. I feel like the autos on these are quite good. You get a decent amount of power even though it's only a four speed. Mine was 220 horsepower because it wasn't the GTB. And it was still plenty powerful enough, I thought. Uh, this one's supposed to click in and it doesn't. If you've owned a legacy, yours was probably broken too. Yeah, nice clean carpets here. There's no bad smells inside the vehicle, which is a bit of a, a shot in the dark when it comes to uh, buying a car from auction, you don't get to smell them before buying, so it's good when they don't smell like cigarettes. More people in Japan smoke than in, well, where I come from in Canada. Okay, back seats are cool. Decent amount of legroom. Not a huge amount, but a decent amount. More than a 3 series, less than a 5 series. It's good. It's a, it's a good size. It's a good amount of power. They're agile. They feel light. You get all of this and it's only like 1250 kilos or 1300 kilos or so. So, yeah. Legacy, it's a great. You should buy one or two. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much and have a nice day.